What's going on everyone? Today I'm here with something new from FlySky. They recently released a new receiver called the INR8-8D, a wildly catchy name. And what makes this receiver special enough to warrant a video of its own is that it's not just a receiver, but it's also got a light controller built into it. And if it was just a light controller on its own, it probably wouldn't even still be that special. Like it'd be nice, but not all that special. However, what makes this one even a little bit extra is the fact that you can fully program the light controller from your radio, specifically one of the Noble series radios like this one. This is the NB4 Plus from FlySky. So this radio has the ability to control this receiver and light controller all from it. And today I want to run you through a little bit of showing you what that looks like, what it can do in a, a very small example. You, there's so much programmability and possibility with this thing that it's really kind of up to what you want to do with it, depending on what the build is or uh, how you want to configure this. So that's what I want to go over today. Now, the NB4 Plus no, I haven't done anything to this. This is how it came out of the box. This was recently picked up. It is uh, mid-September 2025. So if you have one in or around that time frame, you will probably have seen the exact same firmware and things like that. Otherwise, uh, firmware updates are pretty easy on these radios and maybe that's all you'll need. So here on the bench, I've got this thing set up already. I've got a power supply here, which is just my adjustable power supply. Super handy to have on the bench if you're ever interested in having one. Uh, so I've got it set to 7.4 volt output. And then I've just got it set up through a JST into a standard servo connector that goes in there. That's just going to provide power to the receiver like your ESC would. So that's all that this is taking the place of. On this side of the receiver here, all of these ports, that is what would be your, your servo, your ESC, whatever auxiliary things you have, dig, four wheel steer, any of those things. That would sit in all of these spots and there's eight channels for that. And then on this side over here, you have eight additional ports labeled D1 through D8. Now these are just a two pin port rather than a three pin like you have on the servo side since there is no signal wire, it's just power on and off. So that is what you're gonna find there. Now for that you do need to find two pin connectors or DuPont connectors um, or like what I have is if you've ever messed with like Arduino stuff you may have these single pin versions and that's what I've got and I've just got it all plugged into a breadboard which is just like a, a prototyping board used for Arduino type stuff and things like that. So anyway I've got two sets of, or three sets of LEDs plugged into D1, D2, and D3. So these would just be like an LED string of some sort, depending on what you're going for. And I've just got three different ones set up here on the breadboard. So I'm gonna power up my power supply. You'll see the LED has kicked on there. I've already done the binding for this. That blue is very bright. So let's turn down the brightness on that first. Uh, so to get into the actual light controller on the radio, we're gonna go in to the menu and we're gonna swipe over to the last page where you see lamp. We're gonna click on lamp. I love lamp. Uh, now here we've got like their pre-configured lighting setup that's already ready to go. Now this is made for, you know, all kinds of like normal vehicle functions. If you wanted to run a pre-programmed setup, this will just be ready to go for you. But if you want to get into the customizing, you can hit the center there. Now, this blue one here is going into D3. So that's D3, interface three there. I can go into that and luminance, the power level is at 80%. I'm going to just turn that down to like 5%. Almost there. So five. So there you can see that is much more manageable now. So going back to the main screen, this, as I mentioned, is just the pre-configured setup. So this would be if you know wanted a left turn signal, you hold the you know steer left, and now you can see that that is blinking. Two, which is the other set, is plugged into these center ones here, and that's going to be if I turn right, you can see those are blinking. And the other one is into three, and that is on this DL, daylight running lights, basically. So those are what those are pre-programmed on. If I go in, I can adjust certain things, and that's what I wanna show you some of that. So 
if you weren't trying to program a daylight running light or anything like that, you can go into this menu first. And this gives you what basically those eight interfaces are here on the side. Again, they're labeled D1 at the bottom up to D8 at the top. So we can see number one is left turn signal. Number two is right turn signal. Number three is daylight, as we've kind of shown you before. Left, right, and then that one. So daylight, if I want to turn that off and I want to just call this something else. They give you this big list of different things that you can set it up for, uh, which is huge. You can other passing light, spotlight, T light, L light, H beam, capstan, <laughs> rear locker, front locker, low speed, high speed, rear wheel drive, four wheel drive, front drive, fog lamp, clearance lamp. And then you have the daylight, ambient light, backup light, brake light, tail light, headlights, left and right turn lights. So much so many of those things there. And this is just kind of for reference. It doesn't really mean anything specifically because you're gonna have the ability to program this stuff kind of however you want. So let's just call this one other. We're gonna reprogram this one here to be an other situation. So now interface three, other, we're gonna set it up to linkage. So it was set up for linkage already, but it was set up to channel three. Now, if I have one of my buttons programmed to channel three, we can toggle that. So let's just do that really quickly so you can see how that would work. We're gonna back all the way out of this system. We're gonna go into assign, and then we're gonna say that uh, SW2 here on the wheel, SW2 is going to be assigned to channel three says that it's already on VR1, no big deal. Are you sure? Yes. So you can see that light just went off. Now, if I want, I'm gonna hit this. And currently it's set up as a momentary. So I have to press and hold it, which is just how it's set up there. I can turn that from trigger to turn. And now I can just press it once, turn it on or off. So whatever you want in this situation, you could handle in that way. So that's one setup for a light programming. Now let's go back all the way to the programming of the lights. So we're gonna go back to three. We're just gonna play with that one again for an instance. So it was set up for channel three. Say we don't want it for channel three. Say we want it to be uh, set up on channel two, which is our throttle. For some reason, you want to have something that's throttle actuated. Now you can see here this TGR value that stands for trigger value. So if that channel falls within that range, then it will trigger the light to turn on. Currently that's at 25% to 100%. So for the throttle, that would mean, you know, half reverse to full forward. If you can't visualize that very well, 25 to 100. I'm going to show you that on the main screen. So we're going to go all the way out again. And I'm going to go to this, which is the servo view on this radio. So here is our graph basically showing you. So when I go to full reverse, this is going to go all the way to the left. And we can consider this to be 0%. So once I get past that 25% or halfway to the left, this light's going to turn off. So it's on and you can see that it's off there, right there, turns back on, off. So it's off from zero to 25%, which is right in this range. Once we go back to the midpoint, it turns back on and it'll stay on for the entire throttle range. So that just gives you a little bit of an idea of how the trigger value works. But that also gives you a lot of ability to do some kind of crazy things if you want to get into it. So let's take that idea of the trigger values and kind of show like some of the things that you could do with it. We're going to take all three of these and set them up in like a sequential fashion. So we're going to take and start with number one here. We're going to go to interface one. I've already had it set to other as the type as the name, which doesn't really matter. And we're going to set the trigger value to be because uh, 50% is neutral throttle, no throttle input. So we're going to have it set to, um, we got to set our upper value a little bit higher. So we're going to go like 65 on the upper value and 55 on the lower. 
and then we'll set our next one to also be set up for channel two and we'll set our trigger value to be 66 to call it 85 or 90 and then we'll set up the last one to be set up on channel two as well and we're going to set the trigger value to be 86 to 100. So we've got these all set to trigger at different values. So it's going to go from one and then to the next and then to the next as we pull the throttle. Now, do you have a specific usage for that? Maybe not unless you were trying to build some sort of scale tachometer or who knows what. Uh, lots of options. You know, you, if you're trying to build one of the, the drift lights that goes up with the throttle input on the A-pillar like they have in Formula Drift, you could easily do it from this without any extra tech or having to buy a separate module, anything like that. If you wanted all of those three to overlap so that as it climbed, they all stayed lit, you could easily do that as well. You would just change your upper value on all of them to be 100. So now, as we pull, now you may notice when I hold the throttle, these two are flashing. That's because they were set up as turn signals. So that flash is there. But that doesn't have to be either. You can change that. If we go into one, which is the first one here, at the bottom, this control effect. There's a bunch of different ones there. Constant. So now, as we pull, it just stays on. The center one is still blinking, but the outside just stays on. Or there's a lot of other options. You can breathe, which will kind of glow and then go down. It's not on off. It's just that you can see it go up and then it go, it'll go down. Kind of like a, a warning beacon light. Uh, strobe, you can understand what that would do. If you wanted to set up a exhaust backfire to happen on like your drift car at full throttle only, easily do that. Uh, fast effect is similar to strobe, but not quite as fast. Slow is just a slow blink. That's what it was set up for when it was a turn signal. And then constant. And we can do the same for the second one. Let's set that to constant. So let's change the third one to the strobe function though. So that way, like if it was a meter going up to show you that and it hit the top and it was that red line, granted I have the blue one flashing instead of the red, but you get the picture. We could change these to be any way that we wanted. Now, those are just some super basic functions. I did show you that we could adjust the brightness as well. You can set that to whatever you want. Turn that thing all the way back up to 100. We only had it at 80 when it started. At 100, it's really bright. So uh, these, what I have using here, these are just some raw LEDs that I had setting around from old Arduino projects. Nothing special about them. There's no resistors. I'm not using anything other than the power straight out of the receiver. That's it. Uh, I didn't wire anything else up. Nothing took any extra effort. At the beginning, I showed you that there was this pre-configured setup. That's one of three pre-configured setups. If you go to that center button here, the three bars at the bottom, you can go to the next configuration by pressing this center two-way yellow arrow. It'll ask you if you're ready to switch. You say yes. And then you're back to a, a pre-configured you know, setup. This one again, left, right turn signals and daylight running lights. So we've got the flashing setup and then the constant on that we had previously. And as I mentioned, there are three of those on there, confirm three. So if you have different programming sets that you would like to have, you can just have that done in here. That may be for a, a show and display type option where maybe you want turn signals, but when you're actually on the rocks and you don't want turn signals while on the trail, you could turn those off. And then uh, if you wanted to have left and right control something different for lighting, you could do that. So a little bit of you know pre-built in multi-setup 
ability in there, which is nice. And then we're back to the one that we set up before with the three. Pretty cool. And also this button down here in the bottom left is a reset to default. So if we hit that, hit yes, then it overwrote everything that we just programmed and it's back to turn signal mode. But that gives you guys a little bit of a look into what you could do with this new Flysky. The, the possibilities are really up to your imagination and where and how you want to put lights into your vehicle. And to be able to just hook them up in there and then be able to program it from your radio, I love that ability. Not something that I've seen at least integrated so cleanly into a setup. And the Flysky receivers price-wise, are really good. So you're not really paying a lot extra for something that add, to add all of that functionality. It's just kind of baked into it. And if you wanna move it from one vehicle to the next down the road, you have that ability as well. And again, the programmability of it is only through the Noble version of the radios. You can still use that as a light controller through non-Noble radios, but you won't have that ability to program it from the radio. You'll kind of be baked in with the three modes that they have set, which you toggle from a button on the receiver itself. So you're not getting nearly the functionality. While that might be nice and all, it's really going to be best used when paired with one of these radios to get all of that functionality. So that is what I wanted to show you guys for today. I love a gadget. I like programmability. And this radio makes it pretty easy to do that on. So. If you guys are into it, I'll put a link down below to where you can find some of that product, uh, as well as the radio itself. If you don't have this one or you're maybe interested in this one. With that, I wanna thank you all for watching. If you're interested in helping support the channel, any extra channel memberships available where you get extra videos, behind the scenes videos, you get to see videos early, things like that. So if that interests you, there'll be a link down in the description below. But if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe if you're not already, hit the notification bell so you see the videos as soon as they get uploaded. But with that, Thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next one.